I attempted a hardcore Nuzlocke on Pokemon Sword using the only ghost type Pokemon. Here are the rules. If a Pokemon faints, it is considered dead and can no longer be used again for the rest of the run. I can only catch the first ghost type that I encounter in each route that has a ghost type available. No catching Pokemon from dens. No items in battles such as potions and X items, but held items are allowed. Set battle mode. No Dynamaxing. And no overleveling past the gym leader's ace Pokemon until the battle begins. There is actually a good amount of encounters in the base game of Pokemon Sword. However, most of these encounters are only available after the third gym. And some of the Pokemon have a shared encounter area so we won't be able to get the other one in that area. Also since I'm playing Pokemon Sword we won't be able to get Cursola as it's a shield exclusive Pokemon. And unfortunately Mimikyu is not available until the post game. And as for trade evolutions I'll be allowing myself to get them when they reach level 36 so Haunter, Pumpkaboo and Phantom will have to reach that level before I can evolve them. Also let me know which ghost type is your favourite down in the comments below. With that out of the way let's get straight into the challenge. The first place we can actually get a ghost type in this game is in the wild area which makes the first part of the game irrelevant. I chose Grookey as my starter so that Hop would have an Inteleon with a Dark type move in most of our battles to make things more difficult. I steamrolled through the early game to get to the Wild Era and headed off to North Lake Milo to catch our actual starter of the game, Ghastly. Kind of ironic our starter for the Ghost type playthrough is the original Ghost type Pokemon. I named my Ghastly Jonathan and moved on to my next encounter. I headed over to the Watchtower Ruins and encountered a Golit which I named Jotaro. And finally, I manipulated the Wild Area weather in order to catch an Encarta at South Lake Milo and name her Jolie. Right now, the only Pokemon on my team that can actually deal tons of damage is Jonathan with his amazing special attack stat and high speed. Jotaro is very strong as well and with the Iron Fist ability his punching moves are powered up even more but he lacks the speed Ghastly has meaning he won't be able to outspeed the dark types on Team Yell's side. It's basically a Ghastly solo run for the start of the game. He makes quick work of the Team Yell grunts with Dazzling Gleam. Huh. Maybe Team Yell won't be a problem at all. In the first fight against Hop, I just powered through him with Ghastly since his Wooloo can't touch us and Sobble and Rickety aren't strong enough to one-shot us either. Bead was just as easy since all he has is Psychic-type Pokemon and Ghastly just one-shots them all with Shadow Ball. On Route 4, I catch my next encounter, which is a Pumpkaboo, which I named Koichi. Gorgite is actually a cool Pokemon, so I can't wait to evolve him later. But now it's time for the first gym against Milo, the Grass-type user. But this was one of the easiest gyms I faced. Before I entered, I did some grinding and got my Ninkada to level 20 so that it evolved into Shedinja. Wait, Ninjask? Where's my dead exoskeleton bug? There she is. Shedinja's ability is Wonder Guard, which means it can only take damage from super effective moves. Since Milo only has Norman Grass type moves, Milo physically can't hit Jolene and we get our first gym badge without taking any damage. Moving on with the game, I head over to Route 5 and catch myself a Drifloon, which I named Josuke. And next up is another Team Yell battle, but this time I'm really worried. They have a Fever on their team, which has a really good base special defense stat, meaning if I'm unable to one-shot it, it will take out my entire team. So I decide to level up my Ghastly up to the level cap to ensure it one shots the fever with a dazzling gleam as long as i don't get a low roll of course all right come on no low roll no low roll no low roll. are you Yep, I got a low roll, which means I lose Ghastly for the upcoming gym fight, but before that I have to fight Hop again. As per usual, the Wooloo can't hit any of my ghost types, so I decide to leave with Josuke and start setting up 6 car mines to one shot all of Hop's team, but I messed up. Whilst I was setting up, his Wooloo was also setting up 6 defense curls, and the only other move that I could damage it with was with Payback. I went through 14 Paybacks before realising I couldn't knock it out with the remaining PP, so I decided to switch into Jolene and use False Swipe until it was left with 1 HP. Then I switched back into Drifloon and set up six more calm mines before killing Wooloo with my last payback and then sweeping Hop's entire team with Shadow Ball. Before the second gym fight against Nessa, I decided to do some EV training on Route 1 with my team to boost their speed EVs. I wanted to make sure my team would be able to outspeed her Pokemon. Nessa is terrifying with her Aracuda and Dreadnought both known bite and with my frail ghost types they would not survive a hit. So I devised the strategy to avoid all of this. I started off with Josuke against the Goldeen and immediately got to work. My goal is to set up minimized stockpile and calm mines and baton pass the stat changes onto Pumpkaboo so that they are able to solo the rest of the gym. Even even though Josuke got confused by Water Pulse, he was able to avoid hitting himself and then broke out of confusion the turn after so my evasiveness was already maxed out. But even at plus 6, the Goldeen still managed to hit me. It's fine though, because now it's time to use Stockpile to raise my defenses by plus 3 whilst dodging Water Pulses and are you kidding me again? And I'm confused again? But it seems Josuke doesn't ever hit himself in confusion and he sets up the last Stockpile. I then set up the free car mines and Baton Pass out into Pumpkaboo. Now Pumpkaboo has plus 6 evasiveness, plus 6 special defense and plus 3 in special attack and defense. But I didn't realize Baton Pass also passes the confusion status to the next Pokemon as well and so we hit ourselves in confusion but we heal with the leftovers I equipped. I decided to set up a substitute just in case of any critical hits and Elite Seed to get more recovery to keep myself at full HP. After that I proceed to sweep with Energy Ball. I dodged Whirlpool and then the Golding goes down. I dodged a Bite and then the Aracuda went down. And finally she Dynamaxes her Dreadnought but my substitute takes the Max Darkness and I one shot the Dreadnought with Energy Ball. Thank you Josuke and Kuichi for teaming up and keeping the run alive. 
time to wave goodbye to the water gym and head to another battle with Bede. But as you expect, his psychic types are no match for my ghost types, so I shadow on my way to victory. But the real fight in this cave is a double battle against Team Yell with Hot. If I still had my ghastly at this point, I wouldn't be too worried. Its Dazzling Gleam would one-shot the Lanoon, but the Fever would have a chance to survive, but as long as Hop double kicked the Fever, we would walk out with zero casualties. But since we have no Haunter, I expected a few months to die. We head into the battle. I lead with Shininja and use Protect to survive any hit they use on me, but the Lanoon targets Wulu instead and gets hurt badly. But thankfully, Wulu used double kick on the Fever. Maybe Hop is actually useful. I can't risk the Protect failing again, so I go for a Leech Life hoping the Lanoon sees the kill on the Wulu, but he goes for me. Fever then uses Snarl and Wulu goes down. Both Hop and I are now down one Pokemon. I can't risk Drifloon or Golit as I need them for the upcoming fights, so I send in Pumpkaboo next, whilst Hop sends in his Corvusquire. I use Protect again to avoid being hit, but Hop goes for Leer. I take back what I said, he's useless and has no redeeming quality. I decide to Leech Seed the Fever and it goes for a quick attack on the Corvusquire. Not only that, Lanoon uses Night Slash on it as well. I've survived another turn, but now he plucks the Fever, and of course my Leech Seed misses. I have to go for the Protect again, but then the Lanoon targets Corvusquire and kills it. Hop's now down to only his Drizzle. Knowing I can't go for another Protect again, I go for Leech Seed on the Lanoon. And this time he hits me with a Night Slash first. But I survive! All Hop has to do now is attack the Feeble. But instead he lowers the Lanoon's attack. Meaning the Snarl will now kill Koichi. But to my surprise, Pumpkaboo survived again on 1 HP. Koichi was refusing to die. I Leech Seed the Lanoon and recover some HP. I protect this turn again to keep Koichi alive. And Hop finally kills the Feeble. In comes the Lipard and I know it has no moves that I can hit me with, so the only threat left is Lanoon. But the only way I live now is if I get the second Protect off in a row. But it failed, and I was killed by the Lanoon's Night Slash. We finished the rest of the battle with no casualties and put our former comrades to rest. Next up is the Fire Type Gym Leader, Kabu. The Fire Gym actually has you capture Pokemon in order to progress. Luckily, there is a Litwick in the gym that I capture and named Jorno. Now it's time for Kabu and his Fire Types. Kabu's team is very strong and fast, so I need to make sure I'm prepared. But I have a strategy. I send out Josuke and use Skill Swap first. Thanks to my speed EVs, I outspeed the Ninetales and gain the Flash Fire ability. This makes us immune to fire type attacks like its Will O Wisp. Now Ninetales can't hurt us since all it has is fire and normal type moves. I set up 6 car mines and 3 stockpiles to gain more special attack and bulk and begin to sweep with Shadow Ball. The Ninetales and Arcanine both go down in one hit, but the G-Max Center Scorch survives one. However, it can't do any damage to us with Max Flutterby, and so one more Shadow Ball knocks him out and we gain our third gym badge. And Josuke is awarded with an evolution into Driftblim. We got a hot air balloon in the fire. Gym. How ironic. Now that we've gotten our third gym badge, we can head off to the more dangerous area of the wild area and catch some more team members. At Bridgefield, I captured a Frillish and named her Trish. When she evolves, Jellicent will be a great Pokemon with its great special defense stat. At Giant's Cap, I caught a female Snowrot and named her Caster. Frostlass is a cool Pokemon and will be great with that ice type for future battles. And finally, at Hamlock Hills, I encountered a Honage which would just not stay in the ball. It then proceeded to kill my entire team. <sighs> well, that's just great. Yes, it's time for attempt two. Are you kidding me? I still can't one-shot the fever with Ghastly. Are you serious? I got to the same point again with the same members, and this time I was able to capture the Hone Edge and named her Saber. She's going to be a vital member for this run. I also got the Dawnstone from the Wild Area and evolved my Snow Run into a Frostlass. I did some grinding to get my Pokemon up closer to the new level cap and also train their EVs. And in doing so, my Hone Edge was able to evolve into a Double Aid. Next is the Team Yell fight on Route 6, but this time I wasn't worried. I equipped the Xbox onto Gola so that he could obliterate the grunts. He earthquakes the Stunky and then superpowers the Lanoon. One grunt down, one to go. They send out Lipard, but one superpower will kill it. He goes first and uses insurance and gets a crit! Seriously? That crit mattered so much, it wouldn't have been able to kill me without that crit. If Hop had just done his job and beaten the grunt, Golit would still be alive. I send in Drifflim and land a will o on the Lipard and then spam Shadow Ball till it faints. On Route 6, I caught a Galarian Mask that I named Lancer. I have a choice between getting either a Cofagrigus or Runa later. I'll be going for Runarigus because I love his design, but for now he'll just sit on our team. I get to still inside and finally get a Dust Stone and use it on Saber to evolve her into an Age Slash. On to another hot fight. He decides to change his team up and I can't believe what he's done. He's gotten rid of Wooloo! I spam Shadow Ball till Cramorant goes down, getting hit by a Pikachu in the process. I then stall out his Drizzle with Trish using will o -Wisp Recover whilst also stalling out his Sucker Punches. Trish then scolds the Silly Cobra to the ground and Lancer takes care of Toxel. Never get rid of Wooloo. The Queen even graces her presence and agrees with me. Next up is the fourth gym leader and my favourite, Bayon. Why is she my favourite? 
But anyway, let's get into the battle. Even though I love Bea, her gym will be the easiest for us as her first Pokemon has no moves that can hit my ghost types. So I send in Age Slash and begin to set up three Swords Dances to maximize my attack and three Autotomize to max out my speed. This allows me to aerialize her entire team into oblivion. And the easy fights don't stop there. We're onto our third battle with Bead and once again we just Shadow Ball his team into the graveyard. I head over to Glenwood Tangle in hopes to find a Phantom to join my team, but we end up getting a Sinistee instead. Oh well, I caught it and named it a Bachio. Then I go and evolve my Yamask into Runarigas. Its evolution method is so weird since I have to take over 49 damage from one move in a single battle and then head to a certain area in the wild area in order for it to evolve. After that, we head straight into the next gym against Queen Liz. Her gym is another easy gym. The Weezing can't do anything to my Aegis Slash as I resist all its moves, so I set up again to plus 6 attack and speed. Plus, the question she asks in a gym power up my Pokemon if I answer them correctly. Of course you must be 60 no pal, thanks for the boost. Although, I'll never understand why her favourite colour is purple when she obsesses so much over the colour pink. But that's our 5th gym badge. On our way to the 6th gym, I finally decide to dress the part of a ghost type user. Oh, you again Hop, you better have brought your Wooly back. This time he starts off with a Trevenant to taunt me for not getting one. I lead with Driftman and will o wisp it, cutting its attack by 30%. I then proceed to Strength Sap him to lower its attack even further whilst also recovering HP back. I do this 3 times then switch into Saber and begin setting up Swords Dance since it can't do enough damage to me even with its Shadow Claw. It does scare me with some critical hits and confuse me so I hit myself, but I have Leftovers equipped to heal up and use King Shield to lower its attack even further. Now I'm at plus 4, I Shadow Sneak the Trevenant, Shadow Sneak the Heatmaw and Shadow Sneak the Bolton. When he sends out his Inteleon I'm so worried about the Sucker Bunch that I switch out into Driftlin who takes massive damage from the Snipe Shot as it was a crit. I use Strength Sap to get some health back and then use Calm Minds afterwards to better tank his Snipe Shot. Now I tank the Snipe Shot and the Sucker Bunch so I start using Shadow Ball till it faints. Finally Snorlax comes out and I switch back into Saber to finish the job as Snorlax can't touch me. A few Swords Dance and an eye head and we've won again. On Route 8 I catch a Dusclops and name it Shielder as Dusclops with an Eevee Light is a tank with the boosted defense stats. And on the way to the 6th gym, Trish finally evolves into a Jellicent. Now Gordy isn't going to be much of a problem as we have Runarigas and Jellicent now. However I am worried about his Barbarico and its Shell Smash. So I decided to do more grinding to evolve Litwick into Lampin and then get another Dust Stone from the Digging Duo in order to evolve it into a Chandelure. On to the Geordie fight. I send in Chandelure against Barbarical holding the Wise Glasses in order to one-shot it with Energy Ball. In comes Shuckle. Perfect. I switch into Lance and start setting up the Iron Defense. This raises my defense stat by two stages. I get up to plus six so I can take barely any damage from their attacks. Now it's time to Body Press. Body Press uses your defense stat when attacking, so with plus 6 defense and an already high defense stat, this gym didn't stand a chance. Even Geordie's G Max Colossal barely scraped Lance's HP. And with that, the 6th gym badge is ours. Next is another hot battle, and he finally brings back the dub wall! But this battle went as you expected. Swords Dance, Autotomize, and Iron Head to this team for the win. Now we're at the hardest part of the game for us. At this point, there are 7 Dark type trainer battles in a row that I have to deal with, and a mistake in any of these fights will cause massive problems for the challenge. Let's be right through them. First up is this Team Yelgrunt. She sends in the Laloon, I send in Driftlin. I use will o -Wisp, but I missed. She uses Night Slash, but I can take the hit. I begin strength sapping till its attack is lowered a lot and then I switch into Runarigas, Iron Defense up and body press her two Pokemon. Next up is Marnie. She sends out a Lipard and I send out Runarigas. I set up six Iron Defenses and body press her entire team for the win. Now here come the Spike Myth trainers. I taught Saber, Sacred Sword and slashed my way through the first, second and third trainer. And before the gym leader there is one double battle. I send in Saber and Josuke together against the Drapion and Lipard. I strength sap the Lipard so Aegis Slash could take the assurance better. Then I use Sacred Sword on the Lipard. Drapion is left but has nothing threatening so we just bully our way through and now we're at Piers. Piers is a great gym leader. The fact that he's the second strongest and he doesn't Dynamax his Pokemon says a lot about his strength. It's time for a rock and roll battle. Ghost versus Dark. I send in Lancer first and he sends in Scrappy. He uses Payback but then my ability Wandering Spirit activates. When someone makes direct contact with Runarigas, they exchange abilities. This way I gained Intimidate and dropped his attack. However, I did miss my own Will-O-Wisp. Next turn he uses Sand Attack as I go for Will-O-Wisp again. And now it hits? I guess I shouldn't complain. I take this opportunity to start setting up 6 Iron Defenses to be ready to sweep with Body Press. During this he uses Sand Attack again, so now I'm at minus 2 accuracy. I should be fine for the battle though as long as I don't miss any Body Presses. The Scrafty goes down in one hit and in comes Malamar. Malamar is terrifying as it has Night Slash which has a high crit ratio. And of course of course it got the crit straight away with its first night slash. Not only that, I missed my own body press. This isn't looking good. I use Protect in between turns to get some health back with leftovers. It uses Night Slash again, but it doesn't do too much 
now. It definitely needs the crit in order to do major damage to me. The next turn, I land the body press, killing the Malamar. Up next is Obstagoon, who also has a high crit move in Shadow Claw. I just need to avoid crit and land my body press. After using the Protect Leftover strat, he goes for Shadow Claw, but he doesn't get the crit. But I miss body press! Going for another Protect, he uses Obstruct. Free healing for me. I use Protect again for even more healing. He then uses Obstruct as I body press, which lowers my defense by two stages. Of course, now I hit the body press. He then uses Throat Chop, but it does no damage to me at all as our iron defense back up to plus six. But then he predicts me again and gets another Obstruct while I use body press. As I'm getting my defense back up to plus six, he gets a crit with Shadow Claw, but thankfully it wasn't enough to kill me. This time I decided to bait out the Obstruct, which he goes for while I use Will-O-Wisp. This means next turn he can't use Obstruct again and I can body press him finally take down the Obstagoon. Last but not least is his Skunk Tank. Skunk Tank is the only one in his team that has a special dark type move in Snarl, so my plus 6 defense means nothing. I protect again to get more HP with leftovers and just in case it crits next turn. Fortunately he does not crit and I land my body press and we beat the Dark Gym. That was a lot more stressful than it needed to be. The good news is we survived with no deaths and now we're onto the final gym against Raihan. This gym is just as terrifying as the last gym because it's a double battle. Raihan also has a Duraludon and Sandstorm team which is tough to to beat without a good plan. Luckily, I came prepared. I send in Caster and Lancer whilst he sends in Flygon and Gigalith. The Flygon can be really annoying if left alone, so I use Ice Beam on it straight away since I know Gigalith will go for Stealth Rocks first turn. Then I set up my Iron Defenses with Lancer to be prepared for the Duraludon. Now Sandaconda comes in, and I don't want it to paralyze my Runariga, so I use Ice Beam again to knock it out. But I risk Caster dying to Gigalith's Rock Bass if it hits more than two times. Unfortunately, Caster does go down. She'll be a big miss for the final fight against Raihan, but we have to push forward. I send in Shielder holding the Evil Light as he sends in Duraludon. I know his G-Max is coming, so I use Protect with Shielder and I use another Iron Defense with Lanta since nothing can hurt him anymore on Raihan's side. Duraludon attacks Shielder with D-Max depletion and tanks the hit. Even the Gigalith went for Shielder. Perfect. Now it's time to body press the Duraludon. He uses another G-Max depletion on Shielder and even without the Protect, he tanks the hit. Body press Oko's the Duraludon and the Gigalith and we earn our 8th gym badge with only one casualty. On to the last Marnie fight. She sends in Lipard whilst I send in Saber. Time to Sword Stance. Torment? That's fine. I'll just set up an Autotomize this turn instead. She uses Snarl, but we take the hit well since we're in defense form. Now it's time to use Iron Head. Perfect. In comes her Scrafty. I use King Shield first to try and lower its attack, predicting the crunch, but it goes for Swagger instead. That goes through King Shield, so now I get confused in the process. I don't want to risk hitting myself in confusion, so I switch into Shielder to take the hit. It's time to use Will-O-Wisp. Are you kidding me? I forgot about Shed Skin. It has a chance to heal its status conditions. Great. Time to switch again into Josuke. He takes massive damage from the crunch, but with Strength Stat and the big root item, I'm able to gain back a lot of my HP. I continue doing this to lower Scrafty's attack and then switch back into Saber. But of course she gets the crit crunch. What is my luck? I use King Shield again to get some leftovers recovery, but she predicts me and uses Swagger again. I am fully being read like a book. I need to do something fast. I switch in Lancer since he has the best defense stat and he can take the crunch well. Time to Iron Defense. She uses Crunch again, but I only need one Iron Defense to be able to body press the Scrafty into Extinction. In comes Toxicroak. Finally, I know I can win. All it has is Sucker Punch as its only Dark Time move, so I can stall it out. I send in Saber who gets swaggered again for the third time, but now I don't care. I Autotomize as she goes for Sucker Punch. Now break through the confusion and use Sword Stance. And with that, all that's left is to Iron Head an entire team. Goodbye Toxicroak, goodbye Morpeko, and finally, GMAX Grim. Snarl also goes down to an Iron Head. And that's the end of the Dark Type Trainers. And now time for the final battle against Hop. But once again, it's a breeze. Double still can't hit Ghost Types effectively. So all I have to do again is Swords Dance up and Autotomize. Then I just Iron Head as double and Snorlax to the ground. Shadow Claw the Pink Urchin, Corviknight and Dynamax and Teleon and send them back to the Shadow Realm. Don't look so happy, Leon. I'm coming for your throne next. Your brother was just a stepping stone. We have some story parts coming up, but before I go deal with that, I decided to go get our final encounter for this run. I chose to do a ghost type run all because of Dragapult. It's my joint first favorite ghost type Pokemon, but it only spawns at the Lake of Outrage in overcast conditions. Plus, Dreepy has a 1% chance of being randomly encountered, and Dracolac has a 1% chance of being an overworld encounter. I didn't want to find a Dracolac, as it has a chance to KO my entire team before I could even catch it, but I could not find a Dreepy for the life of me, no matter how many times I ran around in the grass. Grimmsnarl! Grimmsnarl! 
Corviknight, Skunk Tank, Skunk Tank, Phalanx, Skunk Tank, Jangmo. I found every encounter except the goddamn Dreepy. I spent over an hour searching for the Dreepy, but I couldn't get it, so I decided to give up. I went for one more encounter, but then the 1% Dracolac spawned. I caught her and named her Ruler. I can't use her right now because the level cap is level 55, and she doesn't evolve until level 60, so I put her in the PC for now. On to the Elena fight. I send in Giorno to fame throw her Frost Last to death. She sends in Milotic, so I switch out into Trish as her only attacking move is Plus, Trish has a high special defense stat and is also boosted by the assault vest that I gave her. I use Psychic to try and lower her special defense, which I get in the second time around, but I totally forgot about her competitive ability, which boosts her special attack stat by plus two if any of her stats drop. I switch to using Dazzling Gleam as it recovers. She uses Surf and my Cursed Body ability activates, disabling it. Perfect, now she can't attack me. I use this chance to switch into Josuke and start using Thunderbolt. She doesn't click Recover, so one more Thunderbolt does the trick. Next is Salazzle. She uses Poison Gas while I go straight for the Shadow Ball. Jose Josuke tanks the Venom Shot and finish off the Salazzle in one more hit. In comes Serena. I use Strength Sap to lower her attack stat and recover some HP while she uses a track. Now's not the time to be simping for thick fires, Josuke. I switch into Giorno while she goes for Acrobatics. My Flame Body ability activates burning her, but it doesn't matter as I outspeed her and burn her to a crisp. Now it's time for her G-Max Garbador. I switch into Lancer to do what he does best, tank every hit thrown at him. This battle is mine as I don't die to his attacks and I just Earthquake till it faints. Back to some Champions Cup action. I decide it's finally time to fit the part and change my attire to match my fellow competitors. The ghost type leader is coming to make a stand. This is my tournament to win. Wait, what's this? Bead's back. Guess we gotta go through him first before the tournament. He sends in Marwa and I send in Shielder. He uses Crunch which does little damage while I land the will o -Wisp. I then switch into Josuke who isn't hurt by the oncoming Crunch and start strength sapping to lower its attack and prepare for another sweep. After 5 strength saps, I switch into Saber and begin the SAI onslaught. Sword Stance, Autotomize and Iron Head. And with that, B's team goes down one by one and is finally defeated. On to the actual Champions Cup. First up is Nessa and a new and improved water team. I send in Josuke against her Glissopod to use Thunderbolt which activated its emergency exit ability so it switches into Barrascuda. Josuke survives the super effective throat chop and then kills it with a Thunderbolt. Glissopod comes back in but goes down straight away to another Thunderbolt. Well, that would have happened if she didn't heal with a full restore. Its ability activates again and income seeking. Now's my chance to strength sap some HP and lower its attack as it's a physical attacker. I then start using Stockpile to up my defense stats while seeking does no damage at all. This is because I'm preparing for the G-Max Dreadnought incoming after this. I strain sap one more time then use Thunderbolt and drown the seeking. Pelipper comes out and I strain sap again for more HP as it sets up a Tailwind. Not good. This means her Dreadnought has a chance to outspeed me. I take this chance to use Substitute and strain sap to waste the Tailwind's turns. I can't have Dreadnought outspeeding me. I finally use Thunderbolt as the sub phase and the Tailwind peters out. Next is G-Max Dreadnought. I use Substitute to nullify two of her Dynamax attacks. I don't have enough HP for another sub so I use Strength Sap to recover most of my health back. And to my surprise, I took the Max Darkness very well. I used Strength Sap again just to lower its attack, just in case it gets crit whilst it goes for Rock Tomb. And now it's going for Liquidation. It has a Dark type move, but it won't use it. Makes my job easier. Time for Thunderbolt. And after two Thunderbolts, Dreadnought goes down. See you later, Nessa. Bea is back, but once again, she's a simple win. She can't hit any of my ghost types as per usual, and her Lucha can only use Bounce, so every time she went up, I King Shielded to make sure she didn't get the Paralysis. I use Sword Stance, Autotomize, and Shadow Claw to win convincingly. Maybe if you had some Dark type moves, you'd stand a fighting chance, Bea. Finally, it's time for the single style battle against Raihan. I really want to cast her for this fight, but I'll just have to make do without her. He likes the weather so much that I decided to use the weather against him. I send in Josuke, and his talk comes out, which sets up the sun with Drought. But little does he know, I taught Josuke Rain Dance to nerf his Lava Plume and Solar Beam. He does yawn me, but it doesn't matter to me. I start setting up stockpiles whilst he does whatever he can to damage me. I actually hope he gets the burn later with Lava Plume so he can't put me to sleep with yawn. The rain ends, so I use Rain Dance again, and then he burns me with Lava Plume. Perfect. Now I can't be put to sleep. I get to 3 plus stockpiles, but I begin strength sapping until the rain dies out. This is because I didn't want to baton pass to Rinarigas and get the kill on Torkoal. When the rain died out, I set it up again and waited until there were two turns left on the rain to switch. Now comes in Lancer with plus three defense and special defense. I use iron defense to max out my defense but it yawns me. Knowing that I'll be asleep next turn, I'd rather have the Torkoal in to take hits from, so I use another iron defense and then go to sleep. Torkoal charges up a solar beam whilst I stay asleep and it hits me. The next turn I use body press but I stay asleep as well as it charges for another solar beam. But it's fine, as long as I wake up using protect will be fine. Well, 
That didn't work. It's fine though. I decided to go for a substitute this turn since I know my citrus berry would activate and the Torkoal would just charge up again. Then, because I knew I was faster, I hit him with the body press and that's one down. In comes Gudra who uses a muddy water, but it's not enough to break the slump. He goes down to a body press as well and so does the Flygon. Flygon always goes for Sandstorm first turn to set up for Duraludon, so I knew I had the free hit. Next up is Turtonator and body press for the win. Last but not least is G-Max Duraludon, but now I'm not worried. Lancer is fully set up and one shots the Duraludon again for the win and the right to face Leon. As we go to face Leon though, Chairman Rose interrupts us and talks about bringing the darkest day, and so we need to go save the world before we can claim the title of champion. Firstly, we need to defeat Chairman Rose and his steel tights, but guess he didn't encounter for Jorna just to sweep through his team. Burn them, Chandelure! Burn them all to the ground! Set Flamethrower to 1,540 degrees Celsius and melt them all! Next up is the battle against the Turnus. Did you really just try and catch a Turnus in a Pokeball, Leon? Do you not know about catch rate? Guess I'll have to do it myself. A Turnus is very difficult to fight against, but with Trish holding the Assault Vest and having high HP and special defense stats, I can tank all the damage it throws at me and just barely kill it before it knocks me out. And G-Max Eternatus is an easy fight since it's a 4v1. As long as it doesn't attack you, you don't have to worry about anything. But fighting along Zashin and Zama Center will always be cool. Finally, it's time to fight Champion Leon. I spent hours preparing a strategy for this fight. I didn't just want to try and stall against him. I wanted to make sure I beat him with my joint favorite ghost type Pokemon who has now joined the team, Dragapult. Not only that, I want to be able to do it with Hex since it's my favorite ghost type move which doubles in power if they are affected with a status condition. For this fight, Driftlin was made to set up Dragapult only with stat boost and no damaging moves. I wanted Dragapult to end this challenge for me no matter what. The problem is, it's very difficult to set up against Leon's team as all of them pack a punch, but I was determined. So I made sure everyone was EV trained took a deep breath, visited the graves of the folding soldiers who got us this far, and proceeded to take down Leon once and for all with the spirits on my side. I send in Jorno to flamethrower the Age Slash and take his sword and shield out for the battle for good. He sends in Haxorus so I immediately switch out into my own Age Slash to take in the oncoming Outrage. Now I know he's locked into Outrage, I use Swords Dance to boost my attack and then he got confused. I hoped he'd hurt himself confusion but he breaks through and Earthquake Saber but she survives to pull another sword stance. With plus 4 attack boost I used Shadow Sneak thinking I'd get the kill but I got a low roll. Are you kidding me? Why is my luck so bad? Oh wait, it hurt himself in confusion. Never mind then. Good job Saber, you live to see another day. Now slices Cinderace to pieces with Shadow Sneak. Nice, nice. In comes Seismitoad, but Saber's on a roll. She just had rabbits and now she wants some frog legs. Another low roll? Seriously? Saber gets hit with an earthquake and goes down. I'll never forget what you've done for me, Saber. I send in Josuke knowing he'll full restore, so I set up my calm mind. I go for another as he uses liquidation, which lowers my defense. Not good. I go for strength sap to lower his attack as he goes for another liquidation. As I go for another strength sap, he goes for toxic. Hey, status moves were my plan. It's fine though. He's at minus two attack and all I need is one more calm mind. Now I'm ready to bring in the hex. I baton pass into Ruler who now has all the stat buffs. She tanks the liquidation and I hex the seismitoad into the grave. In comes his own Dragapult, but my little dream beast will take care of him. Now it's time for his last Pokemon, G-Max Charizard. I've come too far to fail now. This is my moment. I used Thunder Wave to prepare for hex and it got paralyzed. I couldn't believe it. Jonathan, Jolene, Koichi, Jotaro, Caster and Saber, all of them must have been preparing for this moment. Thank you everyone. With the power of all my ghost spirits, I order Ruler to use the full powered Hex to banish his Charizard straight to the depths of hell. And with that, I have beat Pokemon Sword Hardcore Nuzlocke only using ghost types. This challenge was so much fun and I'm so glad I got to end it with Dragapult using Hex. The ghost type is my favourite type so to showcase how strong they can actually be really makes me happy. Age slash Runarigas and of course Pumpkaboo were the real MVPs of this run though. I'm thinking of doing either a Psychic type playthrough or a Poison type playthrough next but let me know which types you'd like to see next in the comments below. I may pick a different type if it piques my interest. Anyway thanks for watching the whole video. If you did enjoy the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more and I'll see you guys next time.